Hey, happy Friday. Wow, this week went really fast and I spent most of it thinking every day was a different day from the one it actually was. You ever do that? Hold on. The screen, it looked like it was, no, it's just, it's just hazy looking right now. Let me get out of this parking spot. I'm in the shade. I thought maybe I needed to wipe the little, the little thingy off, the lens, the whatever the hell. It always tells me it's dirty and I need to clean it. Like, I know, I know that. You don't have to lecture me. I hate this parking lot. Nobody will let you out. Dude, if you keep pulling forward, I can't get out of here and we're gonna be stuck here till we both die. Just hold still. Hate this parking lot. You just have to start backing up and people will just have to stop. They'll just have to get over it. They get all torqued up. If you're trying to back out of a parking space and they have to wait for a quarter of a nanosecond while you back up and it just really pisses them off. How dare you? How dare you exist in my parking lot? You troglodyte. You scum. They get all mad. You can see their face all wrenched up. Oh, piss off. Get over yourself. In the broad scheme of things, in the grand scheme of things, you having to wait for a second while I back out of a parking space is pretty minor. I don't know why you're getting so mad. There's a guy back there in a red pickup truck just... Yeah, calm down, Harold. I bet your name is Harold. Calm down, Harold. It's fine. <laughs> All right. He was probably headed to the Great Clips. They're doing their haircut sale, and it's urgent because his sideburns are out of control or something. I don't know. Everybody's mad all the time. No sense in being mad all the time. Life's too short for that shit. Um, somebody asked me, and I, it might have actually been on the other channel. I don't remember where it was, but I saw in the comments somewhere, somebody asked me if I would make a video talking about dealing with grief and loss during the holidays. I'm going to talk about it briefly. I'm headed up to Goodwill. I'm, I'm on a hunt for something for somebody. I just stopped at one back there. It wasn't really successful, but I'm going to go to another one because they're, they're working on my house. The good news is um, they're almost done. They're almost completely done with my house. They said they should be done in the next couple of hours. Um, they're working on the dormers today, and they said it's actually going faster than they thought it would. They thought it was going to be an all-day job. He said, no, nah, it's not. Maybe half a day at the most. So they're almost done. He said they'd probably be out of there by 1 30, 2 o'clock. Completely done. And I'm going to tell you what, these guys are great. They are wonderful. They have done such a good job on my house. And I am so happy. Anyway, so, but it's kind of noisy again. You have all the hammering and the banging and the noise, and just the noise of working on the house. And nothing wrong with that. I mean, you, you know, that's just the way it is. I'm just glad the sun is shining today. Yesterday was just gross. Today it's beautiful outside. It's so nice. Very different from yesterday. And as the saying goes, it can't rain every day. And that's something to keep in mind. It can't rain every day. Things may look bad now. It, they may. You may be going through a rough time. But it can't rain every day. Every day is not going to be that way. And just because it's bad right now doesn't mean it's always going to be bad. Just hang on hang on keep going it will get better it cannot rain every day and it won't rain every day the sun will come out it will it will i know like the song said the sun will come out it will it will come back out and it'll be all right it's just part of life you have ups and you have downs everybody does um doesn't make it any easier to deal with to know that but it's true everybody has good times and bad times in their life so dealing with loss and you know if you lose someone you're dealing with you know going through the holidays without them I would tell you first off I'm very fortunate because I've never actually had to deal with that I well I mean if you're talking about like losing someone around the holidays or you're approaching your for the first holiday without them in my life I have been extremely fortunate because I haven't really lost anybody close to me in a long time. I still have both of my parents. Well, kind of. I mean, I, my mom is still alive, but I feel like I feel like I lost her years ago, and I'm like, 
over it. it it's a whole thing. I don't, I don't really want to get into it all now, but my mom and I have never been close and, you know, she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's a, about three years ago and things deteriorated even further between us after that to the point where she really just has no interest in seeing me or talking to me at all. I, I have no regrets. I feel like I did everything I could to try to have a relationship with her and it just didn't work and I, I'm fine with it. I don't like it, but I know there's nothing more I could have done. So I kind of feel like there was nothing to lose there because we never really had a relationship to begin with. So I don't really feel any sense of loss around the holidays or anything because, again, like I say, there was really nothing to lose. We were never that close anyway. Um, so I may not be the, the right person to ask when it comes to dealing with loss and grief. I may not be the right one, but I... I will at least give you my, I'll, I'll tell you my opinions on it. It got warm in here all of a sudden. The sun started shining on my car. It got warm. I got on this thick coat too and a sweater. Um, okay. I, first of all, my heart goes out to anyone who is dealing with grief and loss, not just during the holidays. I mean, I think that's the time of year when people think about, you know, I'll think of the people who have lost people during the holidays. My heart goes out to you every day of the year because there may be other periods of time that are harder for you than the holidays when it comes to losing somebody. You know, maybe April is the worst time for you. Maybe for some reason, you know, February is the worst time for you when it comes to grief and loss. And other people, it's not even going to occur to them because it's not the holidays. You know, people are more mindful of it during the holidays. But from what I've heard, um, and I don't know if this is true, but I've heard statistically speaking, suicide, uh, the highest month of for the rate of suicides is April, which if you think about it, would kind of make sense because, you know, everybody kind of understands that you can feel depression and stuff, you know, around the holidays, like November, December, January, but people start to kind of, you know, maybe they, their mood improves after that some people are maybe their mood doesn't improve and by April they're feeling like well if I don't feel any better by now I'm never gonna feel any better um, which this is not medical advice this is not meant to replace therapy or a doctor's advice or anything like that like I have said a hundred thousand times I am just a goober on the internet okay take what I say with a grain of salt you can flip me off and tell me I'm an idiot whatever you want to do I'm not meaning for this to replace the advice or the directions of a professional. If I'm not a professional, I'm a professional bullshitter. That's about all I'm a professional at. Um, I'm a professional at dra distracting myself and derailing my own damn conversations. I'm really good at that. I don't even need anybody here to help me. <laughs> oh, when I stop, I have to show you. I turned off my, my elf buddy, the elf over here, because it was... There's just a constant background noise of in the video, and it was it's bugging me to try to talk over Buddy's air. He's an inflatable. I'll show it to you. But he's crumpled. You know, when you turn him off, it kind of crumples a little bit. He's making a hilarious face. I'm going to show it to you if I don't forget before it's over. I can't do it now because I'm driving. Um. So anyway, my heart goes out to anyone at any period of time dealing with loss and grief. Um, you have to feel the feelings. You, I think a lot of people are tempted to try to distract themselves from the feelings. I'm going to keep myself busy. I'm not going to think about it. I'm not going to deal with it. I'm just going to ignore it, push those feelings aside. You cannot do that forever. And I know I come from a family where people do that. They, they suppress their feelings. They bottle them up. And then they all come busting out at the most inappropriate, inopportune moments. Those feelings are not going to go away if you press them down and bottle them up. They are not going away. They will fester and then they will explode out of there like Mentos in a Diet Coke bottle and it will always be at a bad time and it will just be awful. Just, you have to feel the feelings. You have to express your feelings you know, you may be going to see a therapist would help, talking to a counselor, a religious uh, 
leader like a pastor or a rabbi or somebody you know talking to somebody can really help or talking to a friend about it maybe joining a there are a lot of support groups for people who are dealing with loss different types of support groups for that sort of thing you might be able to find something like that even if it's online there are online support groups if there aren't any in your area or if you just don't like the ones in your area for some reason Maybe there are creepy people there. I don't know. Maybe it's all a bunch of Carls and they're just there trying to pick up somebody. I don't know. But there are groups online too. The internet is a wonderful tool. I know there are a lot of things about the internet that you're telling me, but the internet is it's a great tool if you'll, you know, if you use it. You know, it can be a really good thing. There are good things about it. And one thing is you can connect with people in other parts of the world that you otherwise would never be able, you would never even know. It's really great for that. Um, but you, okay, first first step, you have to feel the feelings. You have to acknowledge they're there. You have to feel them. But you don't want to get stuck in them. Don't, don't You don't want to stall out and get stuck in the feelings and never move on from there. You don't want grief to become part of your identity forever. You know what I mean? You have to feel the feelings and process everything about it. But at some point, you you do have to start to go on with your life. And I would think that the person that you're grieving would want you to do that. Um, would they want you to just sit around being sad for decades? No, they want you to go on and live your life. They want you to experience life. The good, the bad, the ugly, everything about life. They want you to go on and experience that. They are not here to do it with you. And that is sad. And I, I, I know... I know it sucks to miss people. I have lost people in my life. And there's another aspect to grief that, that people may not think of. You may be grieving somebody who isn't even deceased. I mean, it may be somebody for any number of reasons who is just no longer a part of your life. And that to me is a va that is just as valid as losing someone to death. If you truly felt attached to someone, you really loved them and for whatever reason, they are no longer in your life. I think in some ways it's actually could be kind of hard. It may be harder to lose somebody who hasn't passed away because they're still out there walking around. You know, they're still out there. Um, they just aren't going to be part of your life anymore. And you may still have to see them occasionally. And they may be with someone else. Or they, you know what I mean? Oh, God. Yeah, I've been there too. You really love somebody and then you're no longer together and you, it is almost like grieving a death. I mean, if you really, really love somebody and you lose them for whatever reason, oh, it's awful. It's awful. But, and you still, you can still run into them at the grocery store like, ugh, please. Yeah, not that. Yeah. Um. I'm at, I'm at Goodwill, but I'm going to keep talking. I'm going to shut the car off, though. Okay. Let me show you this right quick. <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to lighten the mood, but I also wanted to take my coat off. It's hot in here. Okay. Um. You could... You could start a new tradition. Like maybe, like, I, I don't know, just for example, like say you're really close to your grandmother and she passed away and this is going to be your first Christmas without her and you guys used to love to make cookies together at Christmas time. That was your tradition. Well, you could still make cookies. Maybe you could get together with some friends or other family members and make cookies and like take them to a nursing home or something like that. Or you could find a totally different, you could start a new tradition at, at you know, during the holidays. You could just find a different thing to do. Um, but still, you know, you still remember your grandmother. You still love her. You still miss her. It's not going to fix anything, but it will give you a new direction to kind of channel that. And you still have a tradition. You still have a thing that you do that you can still enjoy um, so you're not just sitting around thinking, oh, I wish I could do that. Well, you can still do stuff. You can still do things during the holidays. You can still have your traditions and do things 
and enjoy things even though she's not here anymore. And I think she would want you to do that. I, I you know, I think about the people in my life, especially my kids, you know, and, and I, I just, my main goal in life is to stay alive as long as they are minors. I, I, I the thought of what would happen to them if something happened to me just scares me to death. Um, and I, I need to actually, I'm going to be working on one thing I'm going to start on the beginning of the year is amending my will and making some changes to some stuff so that if something were to happen to me, they would be all right. Or I, there would be a better chance of it, I, like estate planning and stuff like that. I really need to do that. Yeah, I derailed my conversation. See, I am a professional. I'm really good at it. I do. I, I even do it well when I don't intend to. Sorry. Um. It's kind of weird because when I went into Trader Joe's yesterday, just what are the odds? I had been thinking about it and coming out of the out of Trader Joe's was the attorney that did my original will. That was wild. Like, damn, what are you doing here? And so I, she was coming out as I was going in like, how about that? How you doing? Oh, my God. You know, I should have asked her, like, do you still do wills? Because I, I need to update mine. I should have. But it was just so weird to see her there. Like, out of all the people here, you're the one coming out of here. And I was just thinking about my will. And you're the one who did my will. That is crazy. Anyway, that was like... 15 years ago and it's out of date and I really need to update it. But anyway, shit, what was I saying? Yeah. If something were to happen to me, the last thing I would want would be for my kids to just stall out and be sad forever. I don't want that for them. I want them to feel the feelings. I understand, you know, life would be hard for them and it, and it would suck. It would suck so bad. But I want them to go on. I don't want them to just give up. I want them to go on. I want them to be happy. I want them to do things and experience life. I don't want them sitting around being sad. Although I understand that's natural. That is perfectly normal to be sad. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. In fact, I'm saying don't bottle up your feelings. Let them out. Feel the sadness. You could be angry. You could be sad. You could feel hopeless. All of that is valid. That is all valid, normal stuff to feel when you lose somebody. And if you feel that you need to see a therapist and talk to a therapist, don't hesitate to do that. There are plenty of resources. If you can't afford it, there are plenty of resources out there to help pay for it. There might be some free services in your area. Um, if you just check around, like the local health department can help you, local hospitals... There are there are resources out there for you if you need them. Um, if you come from a family where going to therapy is taboo, and part of my family is like that, like there's something wrong with you. If you you know you shouldn't need to go to a therapist. That's you know that's all. It's BS anyway. It's quackery. Don't do it. I'm here to tell you it's fine. Okay. If you need a therapist, don't listen to that. Don't listen to that. If it would help you, do it. Um, I have lost some family members who I just wonder if maybe they would have made different choices in their lives if they had a therapist to talk to or somebody to talk to about what was going on with them. Um, I don't, I don't know, but that that's the thing in my family. Like, oh, you don't go to therapy, especially if you're a man, you don't go to therapy. Well, you know what? That's, that's bullshit. If you need it, don't don't feel like there's something wrong with you. There's not. There's nothing wrong with you to go see a therapist. I've done it uh, off and on since I was in middle school. I'm not in therapy at this point. I haven't been in therapy in a number of years. But if I felt like I needed it, I would not hesitate to go back. There's nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it at all. It just means you're human. And sometimes as a human being, we need help. And that's okay. Um, Yeah, find find new things that you can do. Um, talk, just talk to people. If you're somebody that feels better by talk, you know, talking to people, do that. Or if you need solitary, if you need solitude, seek out solitude. Whatever it is that get, brings peace to your mind and your soul, do it. Um, but I, don't stop living your life because you're crippled by grief. I understand if it takes you out temporarily, but if you're finding that you just cannot, you just cannot seem to get back, get back into the swing of things and it is really taking over your life, I would, I would strongly recommend that you talk to somebody, go see somebody and get some help. 
even if it's just like if you have a, a doctor, you have a family doctor or something, go talk to them. Just don't, don't, uh, don't put it off. I would do that if at all possible. But again, this is not medical advice. It's not any kind of any advice. It's just a goober on the internet talking to you. I think the main thing to keep in mind is that whoever you lost, even if it's somebody who's still alive, um, I doubt they would want you to just sit and rot in one spot for the rest of your life because your relationship with them is over, whether it's because of death or something else. I don't think they would want you to just sit there and rot. You know, that I don't, and if they do, then they're a shit bag and, and you're well rid of them. You know, if they want you to do that, then they're, they're a piece of crap and we don't care what they think. And I have an ex like that who would be tickled to death to hear that I just sat and rotted after everything ended. Like, nah, bitch, I'm not. <laughs> ah. You can't, you can't destroy me that easily. Um, so I don't, I don't, I don't really think I've offered any helpful advice at all. I'm sorry. I am so thankful today though, because when I was thinking about this earlier, I thought, you know what? I'm not the right person to ask because I don't really have any experience at that, with that. I'm overdue. I, I feel like it's coming, though. And, and it is, because both of my parents are now in their 80s. My dad is 82. My mom is 83. My brother, how old am I? <laughs> I have to do the math. My brother's 53. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, it's coming. I know it's coming. And I, I don't know how I'm going to feel when my mom passes away. I've thought about that a lot. How, how am I going to feel about that? I mean, we're estranged. We don't really have a relate. We don't have a relationship at all. How am I going to feel when she passes away? Is it going to hit me hard? Is it not going to hit me at all? Is it going to be in between? I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. And, and I think sometimes you never really know how losing someone is going to affect you until it happens. You may think you'll handle it just fine and you don't. Or you may think you will not be able to go on, but you you are able to go on. And I hope that you are. I don't want to see anybody just taken out by it. You know, I, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. You know, I, I don't want to see anybody just completely destroyed by loss and grief and despair. I, I wouldn't want to see that happen to anybody. I want you to go on and enjoy your life. And, and I, I know this is totally unrelated, but, well, you know, one thing that might help you, maybe not, maybe not. This is just something for me. I have been watching a lot of these videos about people who said they've had like near death experiences. Like they, they, you know, their heart stopped on the operating table and they had this experience and a lot of them kind of have common themes to them. And one of the themes that seems to be in pretty much all of them is just how amazing the afterlife is. And, and again, it could just be you know, endorphins or something going on with the brain and it's not real. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Maybe some of them are real. Some of them are just like vivid dreams or something. But if I, I would bet though, if you've lost someone watching videos of people explaining near death or explaining what they believe the afterlife looks like, it could kind of help. I mean, it's worth a shot. You know, you could look up some NDEs, near death experience videos and just listen to the people tell their stories and what what to what to them the afterlife looked like. It could be helpful to to see and understand that there is a possibility that it's not real, but maybe the person you're grieving if they have passed away, they may be much better off now than they were before. Now, I am not a religious person um at all, but I do I do think there is something after death. I I just, I don't know. It's like I just feel it. I don't have anything to base it on. I just feel like there's more to us than just our body. There's more to us than just our brain and our heart. There is more, there is like a soul. I really think so. And I think when we die, we, there is something else. I, I believe that. Um, and it's not really based on any religious stuff. It's just, I don't know. I've just always kind of felt that to be true. And it, it gives me comfort to think that, you know, I hope that the people I, that I have lost that have passed away are happy now that they are enjoying whatever comes after this. Cause I don't know, I honestly don't know what comes after this, but I hope it's good. And I hope that they are happy wherever they are. 
Um, I don't think you just disappear or cease to exist when you die. I really think there's something beyond that. And if there is something beyond this, I, I hope it's good. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> it may not be the same for everybody. I don't know. But I think it, it could be a source of comfort to listen to some people's stories and think about the person or the people that you've lost and think that, you know, there's a good chance that they are, they're somewhere and they are happy and they would want me to be happy too. They don't want me to sit around being sad or feeling angry or depressed for the rest of my life. They want me to go on and I want you to go on. After you felt the feelings and processed everything, don't bottle that shit up. It will come back out. It will not go away. It will fester and get big, and then it'll all come out, and it's nasty. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's what my family, like, there's a whole section of my family like that. They do not discuss feelings at all. No. No, we don't talk about feelings. We keep them bottled up right here, just right in our chest, and then it all comes out at a reunion in the most inopportune moment, like, what the hell was that about? Yeah, don't do that. It is just awful. It benefits no one. You know, don't do that. You don't want to stress everybody out. Don't do that shit. Feel the feelings. Talk about them. Um, and understand that you're not alone. You know, there are a lot of people out there that feel the same way. And not just during the holidays. Like I said, it could be any period of time during the year. Maybe it's around the time that they passed away. Maybe it's around their birthday or some other significant date with them. So it could be any time. And my heart goes out to you whenever that that time or those times would be for you. And I know it's hard. Um, but hang in there and keep going. And try to find joy. Try to find things in life that bring you joy during these periods of time that are so hard. Try to find something that makes you happy. Even if it's just going for a walk in the woods on a pretty day like this and enjoying the feeling of the sun on your face. I mean, like anything like that just makes me feel good. You know, the smell of the, just the fresh air of the outdoors. Like I was outside the other day, outside of the city limits and somebody was burning leaves. And I know it's terrible, but I love the smell of burning leaves. It smells so nice. And I just enjoyed a simple moment of just like, <sighs> I haven't smelled that in a long time because you can't do that here in the city limits, but I was outside of town and I was able to enjoy it. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if any of this helps, but, um, I am, so I am really, I will just tell you, I'm really sorry for your loss. Wait, for whatever reason, if someone is not there for you anymore, it's hard. I'm, I'm so sorry that you're having to deal with it. And I really hope that you can go on and enjoy something about the holiday season. Maybe you could watch a movie or read a book or something that brings you joy. Um, whatever it would be for you. Maybe you can find a way to find some happiness during this season. I really hope you can. And during the other times of the year when it's hard for you, um, I hope you can find something that will bring you some happiness and hang on to that feeling. And time, to me, time doesn't heal all wounds but they do scar over and it can be a little bit easier to deal with. It's not always going to hurt the way it does now. It's, it's not, it will still hurt. It, I, I, when you lose somebody really close to you, I don't think that pain ever goes away. And I do think it kind of changes you for the rest of your, your life. You're, you're not going to be the same going forward. You will be different. Um, that's not necessarily a bad thing because I think it is through change that we can grow and become better people if we take the opportunity to do so you know you you will not be the same you will never be the same again but that is part of life unfortunately we live and we die I mean I hate to be blunt but we all are going to die and I hate I hate death I hate it but I can't stop it. You know, it's everyone, we, we all balance on a knife's edge every day. And I try not to think about this because it's depressing as hell, but it's true. We're all balanced on a knife's edge every day. All it could take is one moment, one incident for your whole life to change. And it will never be the same again. 
you know, and I, I don't want to, I don't want to think about it too much because it's just awful, but like all it takes is, you know, one moment and your whole world can change. You get a, a phone call, you, you have police officers knocking on your door coming to give you some news you don't expect. Yeah. And I hate the thought of that. I think about it every time my son gets in his car and goes anywhere. I hate it, but I have to let him do it. We have to live our lives even though it's dangerous. Life is dangerous. Every time you step out of your house, it's dangerous. Hell, just getting out of bed in the morning can be dangerous. You can get in the shower, slip, and hit your head, and, you know, you're gone. I mean, I'm sorry, but it's true. You know, life living is dangerous. And there's a 100% certainty that you're going to die. Life is fatal. And that's true for everyone. And we never know when our number's up. You never know when it's going to be your time to go. You don't know when it's going to be time for other people to go. And eventually, every one of us, me, you, everybody, is going to have to face the loss of someone you care about. And it is going to break you in half. It is going to rip you up. It'll happen to me. It'll happen to you. If it hasn't already, it may happen more than once. You can... Jesus, I think about, I know, I know this lady that um, just since summer, like late summer, early fall, she lost her dad suddenly. And then almost immediately after that, her husband out of the blue left her. They were married for like 25 years. Out of nowhere, just like completely blindsided her, he just left. No explanation. He was just gone. And so she lost one person to death, her dad, that she was very close to. And she lost her spouse of a quarter of a century. I mean, it just, you just never know. We are balanced all the time. You never know. And she, both of these incidents were out of her control. There was nothing she could do about either of them. She couldn't have stopped either of these things. Um... It's scary to think about it, but we are all, there are parts of our life we cannot control, we cannot change, and I hate it. I hate it. But we're all going to have to deal with it. Because that is part, part of life is loss. Part of life is grief. And the way you handle it, you know, everybody handles it differently, but we're all going to have to find our own way to carry on afterwards even if it wasn't our fault even if there was nothing we could have done to stop it we still we are now placed we now have a burden on our shoulders to go on with this hanging over us and it sucks and i hate it for anybody going through that again i wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy i really would not i don't have any enemies i don't feel like i do because life is too short to invest in being pissed at anybody like I, I don't have time for that I'm not gonna sit here waste my energy being mad at anybody you know the best revenge is just to let them go on and live their toxic life but leave me out of it you go on and live your life that's the best revenge for you you can go be happy with your own poisonous self and I'll be over here doing my own thing but it could happen at any moment. Don't spend a lot of time thinking about it, though. That'll paralyze you, too. Shit. Don't, 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 don't overthink that. I'm not going to overthink it, either. Hey, happiness. Okay, it's Friday. I don't want to get all bogged down. But I did want to take a minute and just try to give you some, you know, stream of consciousness thoughts on dealing with loss and grief. I don't have a lot of advice. And I am so grateful that I don't because I don't have a lot of experience with it. Um, but I know it's coming. I know my day is coming. And when it comes for me, I may not handle it well at all. Shit, I may just fall apart. I don't know. I think when I lose my dad, it's going to be really hard. I think that is going to hit me pretty hard. Because our relationship is, is complicated. And, you know, I, I think a lot of us have kind of complicated relationships with our parents. You know, it's not that it's bad necessarily. It's just kind of, like, complicated. And I'm not sure how I'm going to feel when I lose him. I'm not I'm I'm not gonna be happy, I know that, but I don't I don't know how I'm gonna react to it. I have no idea. 
I really hope it doesn't happen around the holidays. But even if it didn't happen around the holidays, you have that first Christmas where you have a moment like, oh, I'm going to call and see when we're going to get together. Oh, because that will still occur to me because I was just thinking about it today. Like, I really need to call him and find out because we get together and exchange presents usually before Christmas. Like, I need to call him and find out, you know, what day we can do that. I haven't done that yet. Um, but there will come a year when that won't be necessary anymore because he won't be here. And that's going to be really, really hard. That's going to be really hard. I will miss him. Um, yeah. My brother and I have never been close. Um, he's lived all over the country for the last 35 years. We weren't close before that. Um, he's kind of guarded. Like, he just kind of keeps his feelings to himself. He's not one. He's not a lovey-dovey kind of person. Most of the people in my family aren't. Um, hard, very hard person to get to know. Very hard to be close to. I don't know if he passed away before me. I don't know how I would feel about it. It would suck because he's my only sibling, but I don't know. We were never close. It might be worthwhile to think about, like, different people in your life. You know, how would I feel if I lost them? What would that, what would that be like? What would that feel like? I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, it would suck, but it would. our relationship wouldn't really change. Hell, I haven't even talked to him in over two years. I think the last time I talked, wow. The last time I talked to him was New Year's Eve 2019. That was the last time. I haven't seen him or talked to him since then. And it's not because there's any bad blood or anything. We, like I say, we've just never been close. I go for years and I never hear from him and I don't contact him. And Yeah, it's just we've always been that way. Um, yeah, it sucks, but that's just the way my family is. You know, every family isn't like, you know, the ones on Christmas cards. Most families aren't. I remember watching the TV show Roseanne when it first came out back in the, what was it, the eight, late 80s? And thinking it was so nice to see a sitcom with a family that kind of looked like the one I knew. Like, that seems a little bit more right to me than <laughs> most of these cookie cutter families on these TV shows. It felt a little bit more real. <laughs> like, that sounds a lot like my family. Dysfunctional as hell. And the house is messy and, and everything is just fucked up. <laughs> oh, that feels strangely familiar. Okay. Sorry. Anyway, I do, I, I really do, I feel so bad for anybody dealing with loss and grief. And I, I am so sorry that you have to deal with it. I am. And I hope... I hope you can find some joy and happiness over the next couple of weeks. I really do. I, I hope you can find something that will make you happy, even if it's just briefly, like enjoying a nice cup of hot chocolate or, or something, or a, a nice nap, or something that will make you feel good, bring you a little bit of peace, a little bit of happiness. I hope you can find that. And keep going. Keep going. The person that you're grieving would want you to do it. I want you to do it. Your family wants you to do it. Your friends want you to do it. And hang in there. You know, I, I, I don't really have any magical words of wisdom. But, yeah, that's, that's it for me. So, thank you so much for watching and for being here. I really hope that you have a fantastic day. And you have a wonderful weekend coming up. And I will see you again soon.